So friends, I'm not going to make any formal addresses to everybody and uh, I'm not going to go into Dr. Sardasai because he's much above all those titles. He's a writer, he's an artist and uh, I'm not going to fall into that picture of academics who give long talks. <laughs> None of it. Mine is short. I was controlled by the co-coordinator. He said, this much time, and that's it. So I'm going to stick to that. And uh, yes, so my topic is the uh, Manohar Rai Sardasai at the confluence of the East and the West. That's right. And uh, you know, um, the other speakers have mentioned certain things about him, like um, uh, Dr. Rao, uh, Professor Vijay Rao, she spoke about uh, his uh, you know, his small frame, and that he was, he kept to himself, but when he spoke, he made you laugh or he made you dream, that's what I would add. And uh, so that's how I knew him, and, um, and therefore, I would say that uh, I had the special privilege of meeting uh, Professor Sardesai, now I say professor because he was my professor, and I had the privilege which none of you must have had, I don't know, of being the only student in his class. <laughs> and that was when I was doing my part one. Uh, fortunately for me, perhaps, uh, there were no other students, so I made French part one. And uh, so I was there with him on a one-to-one, -one, and uh, the best of him came at that time. Because there was no audience and he could do whatever he wanted, say whatever he wanted, and I was all yours. And um, so let me also tell you that very little of the syllabus was done, but uh, <laughs> yes, I, I had to study on my own. But what I learned in class supersedes all that the syllabus would contain, all right? So with this I start with um, presenting Manohar Rai Sardasai as a multifaceted poet whose work touches the lyrical, the philosophical, the social, and the patriotic. So in this book of mine, where I have put some of his translations, I, I do not claim that all his work is here, it's not. So these are some Kokani poems that I've translated into English, and the French poems, which I have included, but not translated, strangely. Why? Because I, this was aimed at a French audience, you know, at my students and whoever would read, but the, for the French uh, audience. So I, and I wanted his Konkani poetry to go down to the younger generations, you know, especially in the diaspora who would know nothing about him. So I made it a point to get help to translate uh, from Konkani into English. So that is my introduction to what I'm going to do and to what I have done. Now, his patriotic poetry is of special significance, both in Konkani as well as in French. Although Manohar Rai Sardasai was not an activist at the forefront of the Goa liberation movement, he was a powerful inspiration to Goans, beckoning fellow Goans to arise and awake as he says it in his famous poem, which everyone has already mentioned, the Zayat Zage, against the forces of colonialism. Some of his very significant poems are the ones that awaken the social and the patriotic consciousness of Goans. The world wanderers, as he calls his fellow Goans, scattered over the globe, had and still have what Anderson calls a long distance nationalism, typical of the migrants defending national causes in foreign countries. Because the Goans settle everywhere, but they carry the land in their heart. An analogous situation characterized and united Goans settled in various parts of the world during the pre-liberation days. The independence of India from British colonialism and the Indian freedom struggle inspired Goans to rethink their own situation in Goa because they could see what was happening outside that I will be speaking about. While in Paris on a scholarship from the French government, young Manohar Rai came in close contact 
with other patriots. One of whom was the Goan patriot, Aquino de Bragasse. I would relate here Sarkozy's uh, words to Aquino's wife, Sylvia Bragasse, who has also passed away recently. His first meeting with Aquino de Bragasse in 1954. So I will quote Sarkozy's words. He said, I was in Paris from 1952 to 1958. I think it was in 1954, the first time I saw him. He came to me and asked if I was a Goan. That was our first meeting. He introduced me not to other Goans, but to other Portuguese youth. Sardesai recalls that Aquino had met other Goans who lived in Paris and were a part of the group, the group to which Sardesai belonged. And these are names that we have heard before. We have Mahale, who was also a professor, Sungaunkar, Bichinkar from Margaon, Madame Kamla, and Victor from Kurdari. This is what he says. And uh, Sardesai adds that they were all against colonialism. And he remembers his acquaintance with students who were also uh, a part of the National Liberation Front fighting for the decolonization of African countries. So there were, this was the time, uh, I think uh, Mr. Shailendra has spoken about it, that this was the time when they were all into this thing of decolonization. And so they were all of one mind. That's very important. A brief interlude here for the sake of those who may not know Aquino de Bragasse. You may know him or there might be some who don't know him. He's a Goan who studied at the Liceo in Belgium and later moved to Portugal and then to Portuguese East Africa. During this time, he realized the effects of the Portuguese colonial policy, a realization that would steer the course of his life. He studied in Paris in 1951, where he met other like-minded students with revolutionary anti-colonial ideas. He nurtured the hope that Goa too would one day be free from colonial rule. Sardesai and Aquino de Bragasse met again after a few years later, uh, post the liberation of Goa in 1964. That original meeting in Paris was the beginning of a long and lasting friendship between the two, and perhaps responsible for Sardesai's patriotic consciousness and his desire to see Goan, Goa free from foreign yoke. This is the background that caused Manohar Dray Sardesai to agonize over his country, whether during his years in France or in Goa. His poems in French, written during the time he was studying for his PhD in Paris, express the pain and a patriot in exile. This is made very clear in the poem, Everywhere I Go, Partout Où Je Vais, in French. <coughs> so I have projected the poems here because there are just three. And because I want to share with you the content, we've been speaking about the man, but I also want to share with you the content, which touches me besides others. So, um, so the first poem, Partout Je Vais, Everywhere I Go, this first poem I'll read in English and maybe parts in French here and there for the, uh, for the benefit of, I mean, in fellowship with my French students and colleagues. So it says, I carry with me that soil as red as blood, the silent soft smoke hills, the fiery waves of the river Zwari, Everywhere I go, I carry with me the wrath of the forest of Satari, the deep wounds of the pickaxe on the bodies of gods and goddesses. Everywhere I go, I carry on me the scars of the whiplashes, the dark blood stains on tender hands and loins. Everywhere I go, the wild cry of 18 June, and my heart rose like the lion caged in the Aguada jail. My spirit closed, my blood boils. My heart bursts like the grain of rice over the blaming, blazing stove. 
partout où je vais, je porte sur moi, you can see the translation, les blessures de ma terre natale. Sans ton amour, loin de ta vie, Goa, je ne sais pas comment vivre. Partout où je vais, je porte avec moi l'étincelle de la révolte. I carry with me the spark of revolt. So this needs no explanation because it shows very clearly how Sadhusai had the spirit of revolt within him. And here you cannot miss the poet's elegiac and nostalgic tone where he bemoans the painful plight of his motherland. He speaks from an exile's heart, particularly in the line, without your love, away from your life, or Goa, I do not know how to live. The anaphoric repetition of that one line, everywhere I go, I carry with me, translates the pain that the poet experiences as he's far away from home, yet the suffering of his people is very present with him. A similar disposition of an exile's longing for his home and an expression of oneness with fellow compatriots weighed down under foreign oppression. It comes across in the poem, the 14th of July, the date which marks the French National Day. This poem was written on 14 July, 1957, amidst the celebrations on the streets, because it's always um, celebrated in a big way on the Champs-Élysées. The sight of people enjoying economic and political freedom, what you saw in France. The poet's mind travels back to where his own people, contrastingly, are toiling away at hard, thankless jobs. The 14th of July, 14th July. My heart is not here with those who dance, with those who drink, with those who watch fireworks. My heart is there on the sweltering waves of the river Zwari. My heart is with those who cast their nets on the seashore at Kolba. My heart is there with those who reap gold but are forced to feed on stones. My heart is with those who suffer, with those in pain, with those who nourish life beneath the veil of love. My rebel heart accepts without tears, blows from the tyrant. My heart is with those who cross the desert under the lashing sun, under the whip of the master, drunk with power. My heart is there hanging from the bayonet. My heart is there with those stifled under 20,000 iron boots. Mon cœur est là, mon, mon cœur n'est pas ici avec ceux qui rient, avec ceux qui chantent. Mon cœur est là avec ceux qui frappent sans cesse contre le Bastille de Aguada. So, Bastille and Aguada for him was the representation of suffering. I will share with you one more poem in French before I conclude this presentation, but it would be only in place to take a look at Manohar's aesthetic view on poetry. Taken from the article, What's a Good Poem, published in the Journal of Indian Literature by the Sahitya Academy in 1987. So because we cannot speak of the poet without knowing what did he really think about poetry. It's, it's important to do the connection. I always feel I'm in class, sorry. <laughs> I think poetry is the highest form of literature. I'm quoting Sadhusai. Since it expresses the most in the fewest possible words, a good poem should possess this quality of terseness, brevity. It should mean, it should say much more than the sum of words. Poetry is born when words start dancing. A good poem should possess this quality of music and rhythm. It should be like a mantra, an incantation that makes your whole being vibrate with the primeval sound. The word is perhaps the most ethereal 
and the most potent medium of artistic expression, being at the same time a sound, a color, a thought, a feeling, and a vision. A good poem should possess all these qualities. It should make you think, should create before your mind's eye colorful images, should elevate your heart and reveal to you the beauty and the richness of life. Besides being inspired, it should also inspire. So we'll see the, the last poem, Farewell Paris. Now, Manuha Rai's poem entitled Farewell Paris was written in 1955. While all along he pined for his motherland, strangely, his last days in Paris at the end of five years are filled with regret. He was feeling sorry to leave Paris because there was so much more there, I guess, which met his intellect, you know. A sense of loss. He had a sense of loss while he was there. Now that he's leaving, he also has a sense of loss, but that's a poem for you. As he begins his poem with the lines, Farewell Paris, farewell. Man comes here but only once, life is endless and endless my pain this evening. The verses bidding farewell to Paris also trace the poet's path of initiation into life and a shaping of his poetic sensibility. Actually, in this poem, you see his parcours, his journey as a poet, because there is so much that he got in France those five years that we don't realize unless we read his French poems, which are a few, but they are charged. From innocence into manhood, duplicity, soul and flesh, pure love and voluptuousness, the poet's existential journey takes on a different meaning. So let's look at the poem now. Uh, Farewell Paris, Adieu Paris. Farewell, Paris, farewell. Yeah. Man comes by here but only once. Life is endless, and endless is my pain this evening. Like your gray sky, oh Paris. My life is tender, my verse dull, as a lover's kisses who no longer loves. My beloved, weary of waiting for me, curses the sea which took me away from her sight. And what about me? Here I gather thorns in this rose garden. I have lost my youth awaiting pleasure. I have lost pleasure awaiting love. Love walked away. Oh, Paris, in your wine I have dipped my fate. And lifting my eyes towards the sky, I cried. I wept in spite of your Vigny. Vigny is a French poet of the Romantic period, prompting me to silence. O oh, Seine, I have drowned my dreams in your serene waters. Through madness, through asceticism, here I became myself. Loveless and without riches, here I became rich. A child when I came, Paris, you made me a man. So this was written in Paris in May 1955. Excellent translation. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. At the, um, yes. So at the beginning of this presentation, I introduced uh, Manohara Sardesai as a multifaceted poet. Besides his poems of social and political consciousness, his poetry celebrates nature, love, human emotions through a compelling lyricism. Marked by his personal perspective on people and circumstances, imagery and metaphor, musicality and rhythm. Just a few illustrations due to our time constraints. In the poem La Mousson, the monsoon, nature is personified Verses are interwoven with emotions and the awareness of the senses. The poem goes thus, one of them, uh, La Mousson. 
The cloud is laden with such dark sadness that torrents of melancholy seem to overtake you. The rain and human emotions blend in a beautiful or in beautiful metaphors. His poetry celebrates idyllic love. I quote, I look into your eyes and my smile rests on your lips. Or yet verses like, you are in my heart as you are in my mind. Manohar Sarvasai's poetry in French holds itself as a mirror to the French poets of the Romantic period. His literary expression echoes Chateaubriand, Lamartine, Vigny, Victor Hugo, all these poets of the, of the Romantic period. The same expression, imagination, love for nature, and sentimental outpourings ignite his verse. It was Arthur de Musset who romantically defined the meaning of romanticism. So now I will just quote to you uh, Musset because there I capture what Sansai's poetry expresses in a variety of ways. So Musset says about romanticism, and I quote this because this is what was Manohar's essence as a lyrical poet. Romanticism is a star which weeps, the wind which cries out, the night which shivers, the flower which gives its scent, the bird which flies. It is the infinite and the starry, the warmth, the broken, the sober, and yet, at the same time, the plain and the round, the diamond-shaped, the pyramidal, the vivid, the restrained, the embraced, the turbulent. So friends, as a tribute to Manohar Rai Sardasai, we will now listen to the song, uh, Zayat Sage. Uh, it's a song. We've been talking about it, but let's listen to the song. It's worth it. It was sung uh, at the time of the, cel of the release of this book by the Kotter family here. Shubhat Kotter is... Uh, uh, as Professor Edith has just mentioned, This song was sung 10 years ago, and I'm singing it 10 years hence, so there may be some flaws here and there, so kindly bear up with me. But this is not going to be me singing here, it's a song of awakening. So if you have not been paying attention all this while, wake up. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to need some assistance from you too to liven up this. Uh Yes, wake up and take the message. Shiv Karano Moon Karano Zon Karano Gaon Karano Zayat Zake Zayat Zake Karano Zayat Sake Zayat Sake Gau Karano Zayat Sake Zayat Sake Gau Karano Zayat Sake Zayat Sake Gau karano zayat zake zayat zake Gau karano zayat zake zayat zake Gau karano zayat zake zayat zake Model Likit Bell Pache Wangla Gia, the Wangla Bowa, the Wangla Gaya, the Bower Gora, the Wangla Gia, the Wangla Bowa, the Wangla Gaya, the Bower Gora. Cups of Ori Lows, the Pesos, Sarachi, the Dawaji, 
Zayat zake, zayat zake. Sing along now. Gau karano zayat zake, zayat zake. Sing along. Gau karano zayat zake, zayat zake. Gau karano zayat zake, zayat zake. Gau karano zayat zake, zayat zake. Osun azat. Osun asat narpianga, osun asat pepianga, osun asat narpianga. Dorne koshe dorne tuji, osun koshe raule wake, osun koshe raule wake. Ordentle ingle as, ordentle ingle as, dobro bol zau di zake, zaya te zake, zaya te zake. Gau karano zayat zake zayat 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 zake. Thank you. Well, this, as you know, the lyrics were written by Dr. Manohar Rai Sardesai. But the music was set, it was set to music by Ulas Bunyam, uh, also known as Gunche Shahid. So I have sung a small rendition of his, otherwise the poem is very big. Yeah, but uh, you can make out the love he has for Goa, and I think you should too. So, Zayat Zage. <laughs> <laughs> 